welcome back to the world according to Chakai, where I share my opinions about this world, but trust me, I am not of this world. One of this week's guests is Soraya Daniels. I got the opportunity to interview her alongside Michael Floyd. Now, me and Michael were actually in an advanced sports reporting class together. So one of our duties that we have to do every single day is put our journalism work and publish it on the Auburn Advance. So this podcast that you are about to see is for the Auburn Advance. I wanted to give you guys just a little insight on what this interview is all about. Soraya Daniels. After this interview, I got to know her as a conqueror, a disciplined athlete and student, and she's a family legacy, but she is carving her own path. Let's take a look. And we are here with Miss Soraya Daniels, a senior here at Auburn High School, who averages 22 points a game, one of the best players in the state of Alabama, area championship MVP, and her team is coming off of a 63-57 to win over the Daphne Trojans in Birmingham, Alabama. Folks, Soraya Daniels. Hey, everyone. <laughs> yes, welcome to the Auburn Advance podcast again, because we know that you've already been on. So welcome back. This is your host, Ja'Kai Spikes. I'm Michael Floyd. Yes, and we are back again with another episode. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm feeling really good today. You know, just a little tired from the game, but, you know, overall, happy and healthy, and I thank God. That's nice. So let's talk about that game just a little bit on, on, that happened on yesterday over Daphne. Kind of back and forth there. Your team came in with it, and now you're one win away from the state championship. You're in the Elite Eight. How does that feel? Uh, it's definitely exciting. It's just showing how our hard work is paying off. And all I want to do is just win a state championship this year. I mean, it's my senior year. Why not go out with a bang? And I love these girls with all my heart. And correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but you have scored over 2,000 career points since you've been here. That is extremely impressive. What all goes into that, the preparation, the, the commitment on and off the court? Definitely hard work, tears, blood, sweat, everything went into it. Like There was not a day I just slacked off. I probably never missed a practice unless I was sick. And probably then I didn't miss a practice. <laughs> wow. Who taught you that? Mainly my dad. He was like, at the end of the day, somebody's still out there working. Whether you're sitting down at home, somebody's out there working, trying to be better than you. So in my head every day, I just want to be like, I want to be that person that's being better. Right. I will say this. When you say that you're that person that always wants to get better. Now, I was doing my research, and I saw that head coach at Auburn University of the women's basketball team, Johnny Harris, said that you are an asset player. But also that you are a triple threat player. So how did you develop being a triple threat player when that's so rare, especially at your age and being still in high school? Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, really, my dad just wanted me to be able to score in all aspects of the game. Also being able to defend on the opposite side of the court as well. So within that, we work real hard, we train real hard, he'll treat me well, he'll teach me different areas, different movements, because at the end of the day, my dad, he'd been there, done that, and so did my mom. So, like, I learned from the greatest. Exactly. You do learn from the greatest, honestly. <laughs> yes. yes. Enough said. Absolutely. Now, for our viewers that don't know, you have a brother. Mm -hmm. So, we have to, I have to ask in front of our viewers right now. Have y'all played one-on-one? -on -one? Who's better? How many times did you beat them? So, I mean, you have to let us know. Uh, really, I think I'm better than my brother. He would say opposite, but I really think I'm better. He thinks he's better because he's taller now, but that that doesn't give me anything. But really, we really can't one-on-one -on -one right now because it gets a little bit too competitive. We might end up, you know, fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> that sibling rivalry. Yeah. There's nothing better. But I'm the only child, so I couldn't relate to that. Um, <laughs> when we talk about legacy, so... 
you are a legacy. You talk about your mom, Miss Shayna. You talk about your dad, Mr. Marquise, who was a former NBA player, now working at the university as the director, helping player development. Your mom was a star on the court for Auburn women's basketball once in college. But I have to ask, following in such big footsteps, how did you carve your own path? Really, just my parents, they never really put that pressure on me. They wanted me to be my own person. They also wanted me to be better than them. So with that being said, it also has been pressure. Like in my head, sometimes I feel pressured. But at the end of the day, I know my parents are proud of me, whether I continue basketball or not. They're proud in every aspect of whatever I do. Right. That's inspiring, isn't it? Very inspiring. <laughs> and I'm telling you what else is inspiring, that pre-game routine before a big basketball game, you have a lot of big ones coming up. What do you do before a game to calm you down and get you in the game mood? Uh, really, I start off once we get on the bus ride, I listen to music. Then once after that we get dressed, I pray to God. And then I talk to my mom before the game. And I look up in the, if you see me before the game, like after we do our handshakes, I'll look up. I'm talking to my mom. Right. <laughs> I'm like, mom, maybe I'm not hitting some shots. Give me a sign since I'm down here. Right. Yeah, I really just talk to my mom mainly most of the game because I know my dad's on sign line. He's still going to say. <laughs> he may not talk much, but he'll say something every now and then if I run past him. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. When, when you talk about talking to your mom, for viewers who do not know, your mom, Miss Shayna, did pass away mm -hmm. this past summer. Um, but January 23rd was your mom's birthday. And honestly, you guys, I got so choked up reading the 24-7 sports article about you. In that game, you hit your 2,000 point mark and you described how it was so emotional for you, but how you didn't even want to show your emotions to your teammates because you didn't want to rub it off on them. So my question to you is, what is it about the game of basketball that has helped you cope with the passing of your mom? Really, basketball just makes me closer to my mom because that's like she's really the person who brought me to it. Like my dad was always in it, but like my mom was a coach. I was always with her in the gym. She was coaching. I would run some plays with her. She'd be like, do some ball handling on the side, whether I liked it or not. She really just brought me closer to the game of basketball. So basketball is just like my coping mechanism because it's like I'm with my mom again. Back in the gym, she's coaching, and I'm on the sidelines just waiting on her to say, oh, Soraya, get in there and do this. Mm -hmm. I see the strong woman that she has passed on to you. Oh, absolutely. For real. <laughs> absolutely. You do. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you've ever been to a high school basketball game here, at Auburn High School, you see that she is up and down the court, never gives up. She doesn't want to come out the game, even though she has to to get a break sometimes. Um, yesterday, and I guess to be the last, we'll reflect on the game on yesterday. Um, I think you played majority of the minutes on yesterday. You came out, got in a little foul trouble late. Uh, they had to take you out. Um, in those situations, you know, what, what do you tell yourself? Like, Daphne, they're right there on our heels. There's still some time for them to come back. How do you stay focused and keep your team focused in that moment? Uh, it was definitely like we didn't start off the way we should have. And so in the locker room, I just had to tell them, like, guys, like, this is like this could be my last game. Right. Like, think about do you want this to keep going? Right. So, like, once we came out, they had the conversation. We came out with a, better, a different intensity. Right. And so we ended up overpowering, but still they were still neck and neck with us. So once I was fouling out, my teammates was there to pick me up regardless. Right. So, like, once I was out, we still continued, was able to get some points onto the board. And I just thanked them for that because it's not really easy, you know, knowing that could be your last high right. school game. And so it was already very emotional because I – I, was, I always think of my mom, so I'm just like, Mom, oh, I really don't want this to be my last game. Because, like, I want to win a state championship because my mom has never seen me win a state championship. Right. So I was just like, this could really be a memorable moment for me. Right. Do you feel like the championship defines who you are as a player? Not really. I just feel like just to be in the area or feel like, I just feel accomplished 
if mm -hmm. I even get there, whether I win or lose. Mm -hmm. Like, just to be able to get that far, it just says a lot. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, for real, um, I was looking and I saw it's extremely impressive that you maintain 3.8 GPA or higher. Is it higher than that? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Oh. <laughs> no, maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit. A okay. little flex. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's probably flex. higher than mine at this point. You oh. know. Oh. It's higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is your strategy for preparing for school? Is it the same of how, like, you prepare for the game? Because you mentioned, like, I play my music, I get in my zone, and is it the same for when you prepare for school? School, yeah, I probably just listen to music because I'd be so tired. Mm -hmm. But now I have late arrival now, I get a little more sleep, so yeah. I'd be all rested up. I'd be ready then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Auburn High School plays in the inner region. Uh, you have Oplaka, you have Central Phoenix City, uh, two tough teams that get you ready during the regular mm -hmm. season. Um, now your next game up is Foley. This is a regional championship. Once again, the mindset has to be, you know, it's win or go home. Mm -hmm. um, so how has the regular season competition gotten you ready for a game against Foley on Tuesday? Really just taking every game like it's your last game. That's really been my whole mindset because my dad, he always told me, play like it's your last game. Because especially when COVID hit, we didn't have no games. Right. So playing like my last game, that's why I leave everything on the court. So my coach really doesn't, he really doesn't bother to yell or be mad at me because like he knows I give everything I got on right. the court. I leave it all out there. And to follow up on that, Coach, Pritch, coach Pritchett, one of the best uh, women's basketball, high school women's basketball coaches in the state, um, how important or how vital is it to have a coach like him coaching you uh, during your senior year of high school? It's actually very inspiring. He pushes me to my limits. Maybe sometimes I might shed a tear here and there, but I know he means well right. at the end because I never had a coach that cared that much about me. Mm -hmm. Usually they say you should care when they stop yelling at you. Right. Like, if he starts yelling at me, then I'm worried. I'm like, okay, coach, what, what I do? What I do? Like, even when we was playing the game, I was like, still yelling at me for my little mistake, still yelling at me for turning that ball over, still yelling at me for missing that layup. Even though I'm probably st scoring, just let me let me know. Yell right. at me. Right. Like, I mean, it may, it lets me know you care. Right. <laughs> that's that's inspiring. So. The university that you're about to go to, the Auburn University, okay? Am I allowed to say War Eagle? If not, War Eagle. War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Bruce Pearl Family Foundation um, Outlive, have you heard of it? Mm. So it's actually, so they're coming together in order to help fight and beat cancer, which that is what Miss Shana, your mm -hmm. mother, passed away from. Does it make you feel... Because you talk about that sense of family, why you mm -hmm. wanted to go to Auburn. Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel more, even more empowered going there? The fact that they are trying to partner together to try and fight cancer? Yes, it's actually very, like, family oriented. I knew it was family oriented when I first went there anyways. And just knowing my parents' legacy and what they left behind and seeing the love the people gave them. It's just, you know, something I always want to be part of. And, you know, seeing what they're doing now since... She passed, it's just, it's definitely more comforting. And it, it feels, I feel the love. Mm hmm I hope you do. Because <laughs> there's a lot of love coming your way. As a person who um, is at Auburn University and will forever uh, monitor Auburn University sports, uh, tell us, tell our viewers, what is Auburn women's basketball getting in Soraya Daniels? Ooh. Uh, Auburn women's basketball, they don't really get my all, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're getting my dad, my mom, they'll just get me. It's Soraya. Right. Like, my parents never wanted me to be them or try to be this person that's trying to live up to their name. They just wanted me to be me okay. in my own unique way. So with that being said, Auburn University, you be getting all of me and every <laughs> asset, the attitude and all. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So you got me. You on, got me now. On period. Yes. <laughs> yes. You. Absolutely. You. I have to say... Was that all your questions? Uh, this is all. Th this that's is all, all I have. Okay. 
you all. Make sure that you hit that like button and that subscribe button to the Auburn Advance podcast. See, I better do that. Yes. Soraya, <laughs> the queen, we thank you yes. so much. No, thank you guys. I love talking about it. You know, speaking yeah. of my mom, it's always a big thing for me. Sometimes I try not to get emotional, but, you know, it's just, it makes me happy. Right. It'd be tears of joy. <laughs> Walking in here, I knew you weren't going to be victim for some reason in my spirit. I just knew. Oh, yeah. My mom told me, you know, never hang your head down because, like, there's always going to be tougher days coming. Mm -hmm. And God, um, that he never gives his baddest battles to his weakest soldiers. So I'll be one of those strong ones because right. I'm still here standing and I'm That's not hanging right. my head down. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The Foley Lions are next for Auburn High School. Um, if you could tell your viewers, tell the community of Auburn, um, get them out there on, on, uh, in Birmingham on Tuesday. What's your message to the community? Oh, yeah. Y'all come on out there. Y'all support us. And, yeah, War Eagle. War Eagle. <laughs> War Eagle. <laughs>